Let's talk about uh, dynamic binding in the context of testing. So in homework five, we have two functions, eval exp and eval term. And one of the problems is that it's not possible to uh, test each function independently, or rather it would be, but uh, as we've seen in homework four, we did that, uh, but it would make the function even more complicated. So I decided against it. However, with parameters, we can actually make this uh, happen. And that's going to be a subject of an update in homework six, Homework five works uh, as this without uh, benefiting from parameters. So let's see how the problem here, right? Because the problem is when you have apply somewhere inside of it, you will be in invoking the evaluation of the term of the lambda body, right? Um, so this depends on uh, the evaluation of terms and terms whenever you have an expression, you should evaluate uh, that expression with eval exp. So if you have a bug here in the evaluation of expressions, then that affects the evaluation of terms and vice versa. Um, testing is obviously affected by that. So how can we improve it? In homework four, what we did was we had uh, for uh, the evaluation of expressions, we had a parameter for the substitution. Uh, similarly, in power, uh, when we had the power function, the star function, it had two parameters, one for star, for power, another one for union, for the case where you would um, not have those correct. Uh, so then in testing, I can provide the correct implementation of substitution for homework four, and um, power and union for homework three. And those would work independently of your own solutions. Um, so how can we improve it? How could we write it? So this is the example of homework four, uh, without parameters, right? Uh, sorry, with with a, an actual function parameter. Uh, this is a bit confusing because parameter is used in multiple ways, right? So this is homework four, this is just like a, an excerpt of it. And as you as you may recall, we had a parameter for subst, which was the substitution. Uh, you're supposed to invoke subst. Uh, rather than um, rather than calling your own implementation of subs, although you can call your own implementation of subs, it's just that if you have a bug in substitute in your own implementation of subs, um, your evaluation will be affected. So to that end, to to split that dependency, we made substitution a parameter, uh, which then simplifies the whole thing. So how do we do this? How do we convert it to a parameter? Well, we remove it from as a function parameter, no longer needed there. And instead, what we can do is we can have a parameter called uh, substitution implementation. In this case, is what I called it. And then you create make parameter, you initialize it with our subst, so that when it's invoked, so by default, it uses your own definition, right? And when you're invoking evaluation of expressions, you were you would uh, read the current implementation of substitution and um, invoke substitution that way. Okay. So this is the the base. How how would one go about and update homework four to use parameters rather than function parameters? Right. Really unfortunate name. Okay. So this is the before, this is the after. Um, so how would we do it in homework five? In homework five, you would do something the same, right? You would create, you would need to create um, a parameter for uh, the evaluation of expressions. You would need to create a parameter for the evaluation of terms. Uh, whenever you want to invoke the um, evaluation of expressions, you need to call the parameter. So you need to read it, that will return the function, and then you call it. Uh, and similarly for the evaluation of terms. Right? Uh, and then you can always redefine it. So in this case, um, for instance, here, I'm doing evaluation of terms. Uh, when you invoke this uh, test case, what it's going to do, it's going to invoke as eval term. But suppose that s eval term, uh, s eval expression is uh, incorrect. 
Well, what you can do is you can, if you want to make sure that that works, you can say, well, I know that um, when I evaluate an expression, it should return 10, right? In this case, um, I want to read the contents of X and then I want to read the contents of Y that's evaluated in um, evaluation of expressions. And here what I'm saying is that, well, regardless of what memory and environment always return 10. So any, any expression you invoke, return 10. So this is the laziest uh, way to evaluate code. Whatever, you can send me whatever code it is, whatever expression you want, it's always 10. Um, but the cool thing is that you can isolate it. So if you don't have an implementation, if you assume that anything you invoke is, is the number 10, maybe you can define, you know, you can test your, your uh, terms independently without thinking about how to do evaluation of expressions. So this technique is actually used a lot in practice in object-oriented programming. Uh, it's known as mocking, and the idea is, for instance, you, you have a, a Java interface or whatever, uh, but you don't know the implementation. So what you can do is you can create a fake implementation with a mocking library, and you can say, oh, when this method is called return 10 or return whatever, whatever you want it to return. And then whenever uh, some code uses that object, it will, re it will use the implementation you gave it. Okay, but you don't implement the actual class. What you say is you, you, you define dynamically by invoking functions or method calls what the, whenever the method from a certain class is, is called, what would that value be re uh, returned? So it's something to look into if you're interested. Uh, finally, I want to show you uh, a quick use. This is a paper from 2006, and as you can see, people are still working on dynamic binding. It's not, although it's something that started uh, the first, uh, as I mentioned before, dy dynamic binding. People say it started with with a bug in Lisp. Uh, Right, so in the 60s, and now it's still uh, being researched. ICFP is a very famous, it's the top conference for functional programming. Uh, so this is International Conference on Functional Programming. And in 2006, there was this interesting paper on dynamic binding. And the reason I want to show it to you is, um, actually, let me go back. Here is the paper. The reason I wanted to show it to you is just, I want to give you a quick overview of how a paper on functional programming and on programming languages looks like. Okay, so this is a paper uh, that just talks about dynamic binding and delimited uh, con control, which is outside of the scope of this course. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, but what I want to show you is that there's uh, like an introduction that explains uh, the use, why you would want to have dynamic binding to motivate its need. And then they even give some use cases of dynamic binding. So they show um, where they are compiling a program and redirecting the compiler's output to a file. And they can do that, which is similar to that Hello World example I wanted to show you, or I sh that I showed you. Uh, so they do it with this, um, that's the example they give later in the paper. Secondly, uh, what did they do? Exception handler, blah, 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 closure, handle, expression. Well, second one is a bit harder to explain, so I'm going to ignore that. Third one is on code migration, uh, which is to say you're, you have some code and you're sending it uh, from one computer to the other. Uh, and you're using uh, dynamic binding to that effect. And the third one is um, you have a web application and you want to have control over um, what is being returned, saved to the screen, and you can use dynamic binding for a great effect in that. Uh, so they have examples for all that uh, in this paper. They also give formalism. So this is kind of in the same spirit of what we've learned. Uh, so the way I'm explain showing you the features and showing you the, the semantics of the evaluation, they also have to give it in these papers. 
but additionally they also have le lemmas and theorems on uh, on this this formalism and that's the nice thing is when you have a mathematical formalism then you can start doing proofs about it so you can show that a certain uh, language never produces an error for instance that would be one kind of lemma that you would like to have which is actually this one theorem 4 uh, then they even show how to implement it in OCaml, which is a functional programming language. Um, they explain they, how do you extend the language, similarly to how I showed you how to extend uh, Lambda Calculus with defines. So they, they're doing something similar to that, showing the extension, which is uh, dynamic binding. Uh, then they have some more examples. Um, and they even have some record code. Look at here. Uh, because record uses uh, dynamic binding a lot, so it's a great place to think about how to implement that. What are the existing implementations? They go through a few implementations, a few different implementations. Some people who have implemented. They talk about examples like uh, mobile code. Again, the, what I was talking about, where you can sh send ship code from one computer to the other. They also talk about server-side web applications, usually known as backend. Um, they also talk about database cursors. They talk about layered monads, whatever that is. But monads you've heard. Layered monads you haven't heard. Um, yeah, and some more theorems, some more semantics. So all of this is uh, the semantics where they're talking about it. Even more code, this is, this is examples in their language that they define, talk about possible extensions, and so on. So as you can see, this is a 13-page paper, actually 11, then references, and then some appendix. Uh, so have, they have this, they actually have a really cool web page where they share some code. If you click on, the, um, on this db plus dc, they have the OCaml implementation, they have some scheme code. Scheme is racket. Uh, and then they have some other papers on the same subject. So I thought this was interesting. It's not. It's more out of curiosity if you want to go through it and peruse this website and maybe the paper just to look at how things look uh, in terms of scientific results. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And I see you again uh, Friday. Have a good one.